എസ് ആർ ബാലസുബ്രഹ്മണ്യ മിസ്റ്റർ ഡെപ്യൂട്ടി ചെയർമാൻ സാർ ഐ ആം റിയലി താങ്ക്ഫുൾ ഫോർ ഹാവിങ് അലോഡ് മീ ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഓൺ ദിസ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് ഡിസ്കഷൻ ദേർ ആർ ഫോർ ബിൽസ് ബിഫോർ ദിസ് ഹൗസ് ടു ബി കൺസിഡേർഡ് ആൻഡ് റിട്ടേൺ സെൻട്രൽ ഗൂഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് സർവീസസ് ടാക്സ് ബിൽ ടു തൗസൻഡ് സെവൻറ്റീൻ ദ ഇൻറ്റഗ്രേറ്റ് ഗൂഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് സർവീസസ് ടാക്സ് ബിൽ ടു തൗസൻഡ് The Goods and Services Tax Compensation to States Bill 2017. the union territory goods and services tax bill 2017 the these bills have already been considered and passed by the lok sabha and the lok sabha uh, speaker has already certified that is a money bill and the, this has been these bills have been introduced as money bills whether it is a money bill or not is another question what we are concerned is this is a tax reform as you call it the all the states lose their rights of tax every tax will be uh, yes uh, uh, my previous speaker was telling it will be all with the central government so they, you are taking over the rights the right of the this house to discuss it first has been taken away now this is where this should have been discussed first in the in this uh, rajya sabha because rajya sabha is the council of states there might have been a, a change in nomenclature but this is more important that you should not have done it this should have been brought before the rajya sabha first and then from here it has to it has to, it could have gone to the lok sabha anyway now it has become a reality now it, it, it's not it is to be only to be returned i don't not even whether the recommendations will be considered there is nothing no guarantee about it but anyway now it has come for discussion we will have to go go with that the, 10 groups uh, 10 groups have been set up and seen a tax officials to examine the concerns of the industry and submit reports by april 10 and the working groups can seek the views of the administrative ministry and key industry bodies professionals and experts as needed they have been asked to focus in particular on procedural simplifications simplifications and rate structure the government will take a call on the reports of the groups and may even expand them by excluding including officers from the state government to quickly settle issues the july 1st roll out will leave the central board of excise and customs for three months to sort out all grievances gst will be the biggest reform in india indian taxation since 1947 but there are many challenges for its successful implementation these include getting acceptance from all the stakeholders the states concerned the union territories and most importantly from the traders and small industry sectors regarding the revenue rate neutral rate it is one of the prominent factors for its success we know that the in gst regime the government revenue would be not be the same as compared to the current system hence through n r n r the government is to ensure that its revenues rem, revenue remains the same despite giving tax credits regarding the threshold of the gst we while achieving broad based tax structure under gst both the import committee and the central government must ensure that lowering of threshold limit should not be a taxing burden for small businessmen in the country regarding the robust it work the government has already incorporated goods and services tax network gstn gstn has to develop a gst portal which ensures technology support for registration return filing pay, tax payments igst settlements etc thus there should be a robust it backbone sir regarding extensive training to our tax administration under gst yes is absolutely different from existing system it therefore requires that tax the administration staff at both center and state system trained properly in terms of concerned legislation procedure so regarding the collection of additional levy on gst the purpose of additional levy is to compensate states for the loss of revenue while moving to the on to gst we acknowledge that the fundamental purpose of gst is to make india as one state where interstate movement of goods is common the tamil nadu is concerned about the impact of the proposed gst we will have the fiscal uh, will have the 
have on the fiscal autonomy of states and the huge permanent revenue lost it is likely to cost to the manufacturing and exporting state like Tamil Nadu. Sir, our, our late beloved leader, Poet Chitri Hamma, had consistently opposed to, a, to any action of the centre against the interests of the state governments and raised their apprehensions and strongly stood against any, any infringement upon the federal rights of the states. Sir, we are happy that some of the concerns raised by us have been addressed. But however, a number of concerns of Tamil Nadu still need to be addressed, including the GST Council as a constitutional body infringes the legislative sovereignty of both the parliament and the state legislatures and completely jeopardizes the autonomy of the states in fiscal matters. So the existing mechanism of the import committee of the state ministers which dealt with the VAT regime VAT issues in, is adequate. Ideally, no statutory GST council is required. Furthermore, the decision-making role and voting weightage in the council are unacceptable. They give the government of India an effective veto, veto in the GST council, and no distinction is sought to be made amongst the states in weightage. Hence, if at all a council is formed, the weightage of the vote of central government should be reduced to one-fourth of the local votes cast, total votes cast, and that of the states correspondingly increased to <coughs> three-fourths. Further, the weightage of each state should, vote should be in proportion to the representation of the Council of States, that is Rajya Sabha. This is important as the change over to GST has different implications for different states based on the size and reliance of our own tax revenues. It is quite clear that a manufacturing state like Tamil Nadu will permanently lose substantial revenue in, if GST is implemented due to the shift of the levy from the point of origin to the point of destination, and also due to the phasing out of central sales tax and transfer of input tax credit and interstates, like interstate stock transfers in the two destination states. Due to the difficulty in fixing even nominally high revenue neutral rate, it is expected that the extent of revenue loss under the GST would be around 9,270 crore for Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu reiterates need for a constitutionally mandated independent compensation mechanism that is 100% compensation of revenue loss, losses suffered by the states for a period of not less than five years. In lieu of the proposed additional levy of 1% tax on, the on interstate supply of goods, Tamil Nadu suggests that the origin states may be allowed to retain 4% of the central GST part on the, on the interstate GST that will be deliverable on, on interstate supply of goods and services and this would ensure speedy re recompense for a portion of the revenue loss and it will reduce the amount of comp compensation payable. It does not affect the destination state's revenue, revenue or cause any cascading effect. So, sir, since India is an agrarian economy, <coughs> where more than 70 percent of population is independent on, dependent on agriculture for their income, the GST does not affect agriculture because agriculture income is neither subject to income tax nor service tax. The cost of agriculture inputs will go up since the agricultural implements, fertilizers, seeds will also be taxed at GST rate of 25%. Senbat credit is not there for agriculture production since the same is not subject to GST. At present, the excise duty on fertilizers is 12.5%. VAT is 12.5 and VAT is 5%. 5 Under the GST regime, the GST on fertilizer will be 25%, which is very, very high. That is why we are asking for a rate of 16% only for GST. There is an apprehension that the implementation of GST will make this present commercial tax department redundant. For there will be no, there will, there will not be any tax like excise duty, import duty, octra, etc. However, no one knows how the employees relating to excise and customs will be utilized in the GST regime and trainings needed under the new context. Further, I would like to reiterate the stand of Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu has been at the forefront in protecting the rights of states and preserving its physical autonomy. It may be recalled that our late Chief Minister, Amma, had envisioned the difficulties way back in 2014 and had cautioned that certain key issues would have to be resolved in order to have a smooth rollout of goods and service tax. 
she had consistently raised many issues on which following are noteworthy. The impact of the proposed GST on the fiscal autonomy of states, the huge loss of revenue that manufacturing and not net exporting states would suffer on account of GST, the need to guarantee states' compensation for the loss incurred on account of GST through an independent mechanism, the problem of loss of revenue on account of lower tax rates and declared goods, the need to keep petroleum products and alcoholic liquor for human consumption outside the ambit of GST, the issue of dual control and fixing thresholds, fishing up thresholds and exemptions about the revenue at neutral rates. We have raised these issues in Parliament as well as in other forums. It would not be wrong to say that it was largely due to the concerns voiced by us that the many provisions of the Constitutional Amendment Bill were suitably modified. I am glad to note that the deliberations in the GST Council have been open. Many, con many of the concerns raised by us have been accommodated in the spirit of give and take. This augurs well for the development of a healthy federal system where the states and the center, center are equal partners. I would like to highlight some, of, some issues that are being addressed to our satisfaction. Firstly, the provision of special treatment of declared goods has been removed. Secondly, alcoholic liquor meant for human consumption and petroleum products have been kept outside the ambit of GST. Thirdly, thirdly and most importantly, an independent mechanism for compensation of loss of under GST for a period of five years has been made through a statute. The method of calculating the loss and mechanism of compensation is a fair and transparent, in a fair and transparent manner. It's also to be appreciated. Fourthly, the legislation issues of across employment has also been resolved on the Sir, I want to place my, I should place on record my view point of the tax structure of petroleum products while the international crude prices went up up to 154 dollars per barrel. The price has largely st stabilized and even went as, as low as 27 per barrel. The low crude oil price has greatly helped the Indian economy. We import almost 70 percent of our requirement mm -hmm. and this has served much needed foreign exchange thanks to low international prices. But has it really benefited the common man? I am afraid it is not. The average Indian oil, crude oil import price was $132.47 per barrel in July 2008. And the retail selling price was 50 rupees 62 pence per liter of petrol and rupees 34 pence 34 rupees and 86 pence per liter of diesel. While the price of LPG cylinder was just, just 346 30 pesos. Now, when the crude oil price is 54 average price of January, the retail price in Delhi is on 16, 16 2017, was 71.33, that is 71 rupees of 33 pesos in case of petrol, and rupees 59 uh, rupees 10 pesos per liter of diesel. Thus, while the international crude prices have come down, the, to one third of the peak price, the retail selling price has only gone up. While fluctuating dollar price and other fact factors are listed as reasons for the, the excess duty has been the major factor. The presence, the increase of retail selling price, I would urge the government to consider the, pr the prices preventing in our neighboring countries, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, there are the prices are much cheaper. In fact, we talk of export of refined petroleum products to these countries. I feel that there is a strong case for bringing down the excise duty on petroleum products in our country. It would be per pertinent to point out that the confrontation, that the contribution to central exchequer uh, by way of cess, royalty, customs duty, excise duty, service tax, corporate income tax, <coughs> dividend, etc., from petroleum products companies, which was 1,52,900 crores in 2013-14 is expected to touch almost 2,70,000 crores in 2016-17. Hence, I urge, I urge the government to bring the prices down as actually this uh, on March 16th, 2017, refinery transfer price and landed cost price petrol was transferred to the uh, refinery uh, petroleum companies. 
27 rupees 21 paise. Price is add excess duty 21 rupees 48 paise. 27, 21, it was uh, transferred to the retail dealer for 31 rupees 94 paise. Excess duty 21 rupees 48 paise. Dealer commission 2 rupees 60 paise. And VAT 15 rupees 12 paise. It comes to 71.14. But the actual price, the refinery gives it to the uh, petroleum company, is 27 rupees 21 paise. So, 44 rupees by way of, uh, by way of uh, uh, excess duty and other duties have come. Not only that, when the prices are going down, actually the government was going on living duties. So, therefore, minimum the, those duties, it has the 10 rupees at least, should be slashed and it should be only. Uh, uh, now they will be in a portion to give for much cheaper price and as far as farmers are concerned I think I can appeal to the finance minister again to weigh the farm loan and other things. There are anomalies, so many anomalies. For example, jewellery, present taxation excess duty 1% one, one invoice for 1 crore excess duty 1, one, one lakh, VAT 1 lakh 1000 total will be only 1,21,000. Whereas, two days after this 5% uh, GST, it will be 1,50,000. This, these anomalies should be definitely rectified and uh, it should not go up to that extent. And many other, many other, see also the, the same portion. So I want the uh, government to act and bring it to the level of other, other countries. Thank you. Thank you.